Hi, I'm artist Caroline Carp, and I'm knee deep into a bit of a journey into the unknown and there's no turning back now. Uh, the press release is about to go out and yes, there has been two date changes, but that's because the other dates just didn't feel right. And I even consulted with my friend and numerology um, genius, Laura West, and I agreed upon a date with my curator, Jennifer Pazienza, we came up with a new date for my virtual art show. And the date is, I'm here to announce, January 27th, 2021 at 7 p.m. And I'm really excited about it. And I hope you'll join me. If you're interested in coming, please leave me a message either DM me or leave me a message in the comments with your email and I'll put you on the list. But anyways, the reason I'm here is for tip number three on how to set up a virtual art show. And I've done two other tips. The first one, uh, the second one was your vision. The first one was your intention for your show. And this one is your virtual venue for your show because this is a virtual show which is different than a show that you do in an art gallery and these tips are for artists who are interested in doing that kind of thing you know because we are at the we're in the middle of a pandemic if you didn't know and we're not able to go to art galleries and what a fun way to get eyes on your artwork do a virtual show and I figured since this was something new and it was gonna be quite a journey for me that I would share this journey with you. So these tips, this is tip number three, is your virtual venue. And the first thing is you need to choose your platform. There's several of them out there. Uh, I tested a few of them and I'm mainly going to talk about Kunst, Kunst Matrix because that's the one I ended up using. It's a platform that was pretty easy to use. Um, it has some fun perks to it. It's pretty cheap. You can pay, you can do a free version where you can kind of um, set up your show and see what it looks like to see if it's the platform that you wanna use. It's got a few limitations. Um, I, I stayed in the free version for about three months just playing with it and seeing uh, everything that you can do with it. And then I switched over to the paid version when I wanted to be able to upload more artwork and actually produce a link that I could send out to people to come to my show. And so you do need the paid version for that. And also, I think the other thing with the paid version, it allows you to have more than one gallery. So I can actually have five shows going at the same time. Uh, I am going to start with this one, and I already have two more shows in mind, so it might not even be hard to uh, use up those other galleries. You can also take the link and embed it into your website if you want to share the link with um, actually physical galleries or for an exhibition proposal. So another thing I like about Kunks Matrix is that it has something called Art Augmented, which is a fee feature that allows people to test your artwork on their wall by just using a mobile device. I thought that was a pretty fun thing to do. I haven't tried that one out. Uh, and the artwork will be shown to scale. Um, and I kind of like that. With the paid version, you can upload up to 50 artworks and have five exhibitions at one time. Uh, my plan right now is to have three solo exhibitions and one group show with my International Online Art Collective. Um, so the way that you use it, I'll just let you know a little bit of my experience of what it was setting it up. It was really easy uploading my work, but first you need to do a little background stuff. You need to have, you need to have your artwork saved on your computer so it's easy. I have a Mac, it's just easy to just slide it in to their platform it, it wants the dimensions of the artwork, of course, and the title. It also has a, a space for descriptions. And I've been doing that as a practice all along. You know, once I paint something, I document it. 
I write about it so that it's easy, and I have it in a Google Doc, it's easy for me just to cut and paste and slide things over. There's another option that I haven't used yet, and I might do an additional tip once I figure out how to do it, but I will be able to upload music or a video for each of my pieces of art. Um, so what that means is, say that you pull up my painting called Fair Winds by the Sea, and I have some music that was composed just for that piece. Well, there's a place where I can, I can hang the artwork, I can uh, put the description with the artwork. I can also upload music that can be played, which I think is kind of a fabulous feature that I haven't tried yet, but I'm going to. Um, other things about Kunst Matrix are, oh, you might not know this, but when you, you actually, when you're online, you enter the gallery. So you're in there, there's a, a switch where you can either be guided on a tour where it takes you to each painting and each painting looks, that's why I call it a virtual 3D exhibition. It looks 3D. If you say that the painting is one and a half inches deep, well then on the wall, it shows it as being one and a half inches deep. And then it even asks you, is it? do you want the painted edges? So I can say, yes, I want it to be just like the original and the edges painted around the side. So I thought that was a really interesting feature with Kunst Matrix. Um, the fee is not that much. I think it was $39 for three months, I think. And then I'll just renew that. And the one thing I didn't check is if I have to keep renewing that if I want to keep the link embedded in my website. So that's something I need to do some research on. Um, so the supporting materials that I would have ready for this are obviously the images, um, the descriptions, any photo or music, also your artist statement, maybe a bio. If you have a curator, the curator's bio. And that's another point I wanted to bring out. Um, you need to think about your viewer's experience. So I felt like that it would be an interesting idea to actually get a curator to curate my show for me so that it was like, uh, another perspective and the curator learns all about your work and then arranges the artwork in a way that they feel is engaging to the audience and then they actually speak about the artwork to who the viewers are. And for my show, I chose Jennifer Pazienza and she is a Canadian artist. She also has her own podcast. She's just brilliant and I'm so excited to have her on my team and we're gonna be working closely on putting the show together and I'm, I'm just so excited about that. Um, another thing about the viewer's experience is, so you've got Kunst Matrix, but you also have to think about how do you get the people to your Kunst Matrix? Like, so I'm thinking, and I'm still working on this piece, but I'm thinking I'm gonna have a Zoom. So I have to think, is it a Zoom webinar? Or is it like a regular Zoom meeting? Are there going to be people all over the screen? Or is it just going to be the person who's speaking? Right? You have to think about those kind of things. And um, once we get in the gallery, how do you manipulate? I guess you share your screen. But those are some of parts of my journey of, and maybe I'll have to do another one of these after the show to, to say how it actually did work out. Because those are still things that I'm planning. Um, but if you could think about it, um, you don't want people to be bored online. You want them to be immediately engaged and want to be at your show. Those are all things of how, you know, engagement. How do you engage the viewer? Uh, another idea I have is having somebody play live music. And I actually am going to invite someone. His name is Morgan Alexander. He's a composer and pianist out of Manhattan. And the reason I'm going to choose him is because he actually chose one of my paintings to compose a piece of music to. So I thought he is the perfect person. And he might come for, I don't know, maybe he'll play live or I'll have a recorded piece. But um, also, yeah, how do your people stay engaged? So anyways, this tip I'm actually still doing research on. 
Um, so thanks for tuning in to my vulnerable journey of setting up a virtual 3D art show. And in next week, my fourth video in the series will come out next Tuesday and I'll be talking about your show. So maybe I'll have some of these answers answered so I can actually talk about how you do your show and what you do at your show. Now, if you have any questions that you'd like to have answered, put them in the comments and I'll see if I can check them out for you. Um, leading up to my 3D virtual art show, which is called Sales, Souls, and Sparkles. I'll be sharing these behind the scenes tips for anybody who's interested. And these are tips for you artists out there who are interested in having your own virtual show. And also, I'd like to invite my global audience to my art show because that's why I'm doing the art show. So if you're interested in coming, please put your email. You can put it in a message to me and I'll get you on the list. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.